we do a quick reading naturally from the vortex by abraham and jerry hicks since we're on abraham hicks cruise we'll start there and see where it goes <sighs> i don't have a selfie stick or anything so just gonna hold the phone okay so it says here it's natural that you thrive and the resources are there for all to thrive but chronic thoughts of shortage or chronic thoughts of pushing against those who are thriving hold you in contradiction to your own desires and more important to what you have put into your vortex of creation for yourself. So again, this sort of thought process says that anything that you go through, you're basically asking as a creator, this world is sort of designed through contrast to ask to cause you to ask. Anytime you ask for something, it goes into your vortex of creation. You could also call it the kingdom of heaven or sort of this place where everything is gesticulating and sort of like a womb, it kind of gets prepared. It attracts light components. And then depending how you feel, things come and manifest. You don't just have a positive vortex. You have a vortex really with every emotion you have. And then you create things that are the right match for how you feel the most of the time. So if you're feeling really depressed, you're going to attract more depressing things. If you're uh, fearful, you're going to attract scary things or things you're afraid of or we're worried about. So the goal is to, well, let's see here. It says the negative emotion that you feel when you believe that others are depriving you of something is not about what they have, and therefore what you do not have. So a perfect example of that would be if you go on Facebook, not that any of us would ever do this, or any kind of social media, and start the compare game, right? People post about a vacation. On the one hand, you might be happy for them because they're a friend of yours, but you're like, wow, I haven't done anything like that. Or they got a promotion, but you didn't. Or they're getting married or having babies. Or It's one of the problems with social media, and actually Abraham even talked about it in the second workshop that's actually very detrimental because you're constantly looking at things you don't have and you get this feeling, this negative emotion. Well, I always thought it was because they have something and I don't, like sort of that envy feeling, but that's not what it is. Your negative emotion in every case is about what you are in the moment of your negative emotion, depriving yourself of receiving so in other words, when you're focused that way, and that's probably why envy is considered a 10 commandment, because what happens is, it's so strange because you think negative emotion is about what's happening and it's taking me a while to retrain my mind to realize that negative emotion means I'm attracting something that I don't really want. It's a warning sign. Why weren't any of us taught that? That would be so cool if we've been taught that, like you're upset or you're sad because you aren't allowing what you really want. You aren't attracting something that you really want. So of course you're going to be upset. And it's a sign emotion that you're out of alignment with your inner being. Emotion is about you and you, not us and others. And we're so confused about that point that we're constantly trying to align to others, please others, because we think that's going to give us a good feeling and not realizing that we're out of alignment with ourselves. So when you're feeling really happy, emotion is a result. It's a result of what you're thinking and attracting. Again, not taught that. So if you're feeling happy, it just means you're attracting happy things. How useful is that? If you're feeling negative emotion, it doesn't need you made medication. It means you are currently attracting something you do not want or thinking in a way that is keeping you from having something you do want like criticizing rich people or thinking that just doesn't happen for me or I want that but and even more important if you had not already been if you had not already called forth the abundance you seek by virtue of what you have been living and if the abundance you have asked for were not already swirling in your vortex in anticipation of your receipt of it you would not feel negative emotion as you deprive yourself of it so in other words, you've created something so awesome, you're feeling sad because you're not letting yourself have it. That's so much more logical than this whole 
biological depression and it's genetic and and your medication I mean, we have really made a whole thing with that it's like it just I mean it's a very different language but I remember a long time ago when I was struggling with depression my mom said Emily I really think it's situational of course at the time I felt very upset about that like my mom is not sympathetic with my mental health condition that I need she's just unwilling to be supportive of that whole shebang but the reality is she was right and as I she doesn't know this work but what she was hinting at was this work right it's situational in the sense I'm not living my best life <laughs> yolo but I'm not attracting things that I really want. I'm not doing things that really make me happy or in alignment with myself, or I'm thinking about life in such a way that's out of alignment with my inner being, the Holy Spirit. So my inner being's thinking you can always have that, or even the inner being is thinking this experience is serving us. It's okay. Every Everything is always okay. And so much of my life I've thought so far to align with, with that, so many of us do. And we think we're feeling bad because the world's messed up or it's going to hell in a handbasket or, you know, things aren't working out. And it's so interesting to realize that, no, the negative emotion is a sign that I'm not feeling the love and peace and faith and hope and love that is available in every moment and appreciating the experience for what it is. I'm thinking it needs to be different in some way. I can't be happy with just being, in which case I would attract more and more of what I want. When I can't feel that way and I'm upset and upset and upset, you attract more things to upset you. It's a pretty simple trick. Not easy. It is not easy. You think it's easy to feel good? Yeah, you go try it. But the great sign is negative emotion it means you have something out there that's calling you to it and you're not going to it. So it's actually a great a great signpost to say, well, I'm feeling upset. I'm attracting things I don't want. I'm keeping myself from things I do want. And all I need to do is focus on things I do want or in some way soothe. And, and I really loved in the workshop, she provided many ways to soothe. Like just because something hasn't happened yet, a lot of us get upset. And so you just start adding the phrase so far, just add so far, you know, this is what's happened in my life so far. Uh, I haven't quite found my perfect partner so far. And, and imagining that anything that we ask for or anything that we want, whether it's a cat or a kid or a billion dollars, if we ask for it, it's out there. There's a coordinate that's been established. And the more we can trust that we are gonna rendezvous with that coordinate at the appropriate time, and it's not us, up to us to figure out where, how, but just to follow our inspiration because our inner being knows the way, um, the more peace can come to us. Just to realize that there is a coordinate, it's been set, ask and it's been given, it's out there and we're on our way to it. And that's really what faith, or, or the proper application of faith and trust, but you have to practice it to really feel it. So if you seek financial well-being for yourself, you must praise it wherever you see it. If you'd like more abundance for yourself personally or for others you care about, you must not criticize those who are experiencing abundance. When you criticize or condemn or push against anything, you activate an opposing vibration to what you seek every time. No exceptions. When you criticize, listen, or condemn or push against anything, not e like even a different topic, you activate an opposing vibration to what you seek. So just Critice, and it's so funny, it's all we've been trained to do. Criticize, condemn, point out what's wrong, judge. And it's holding us all from what we want. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? And yet we think it makes us smart. We think that makes us better, better than others. So it leads us to another flawed premise. Flawed premise, flawed premise number 22. I can criticize successful people and still achieve my own success. Whenever you criticize or push against anything, you hold yourself out of your vortex. Your own success can only be realized when you are inside your vortex. Flawed premises hold people outside of their vortices of abundance and prevent them from the ease and well-being that they deserve. You cannot criticize yourself to success. I tried to do that a long time. I got moderately successful. 
but it wasn't fun. It just wasn't fun. You don't, you don't enjoy it anyway because you feel like you're doing everything wrong or at any minute the next shoe's going to drop. Someone's going to figure out you don't belong. It's, it's no fun. And that's probably why I left that path of success because that feeling of self-criticism was too much and, you know, law of attraction. You cannot condemn yourself to well-being. Isn't it interesting? So many of us have been taught to like whip ourselves or beat ourselves up to try to achieve something. And it and it's counterintuitive to realize that that was actually keeping us from what we wanted and speaking kindly to yourself and meaning it, even though, at least from my background, I was taught that's fluffy and stupid. And, but actually, that will help you get what you want. Isn't that funny? The negative emotion you feel in your disappointment, anger, and condemnation is the indication of the opposing thoughts within you. So there we go again. The negative emotion isn't because you suck or you mess something up. The negative emotion and your disappointment, your anger and condemnation is the indication of opposing thoughts within you. In other words, your inner being is thinking, this is great, we're learning stuff, you're doing great. And you're thinking, I'm the worst person in the world. And it's that split that creates the negative emotion. If your inner being agreed with you, apparently we wouldn't feel bad. Isn't that interesting to think about that? Well, it's hard for me to imagine because I feel like if I still screwed up and judged myself, I'd still feel bad. But how interesting that if my inner being was willing to come with me, I wouldn't feel bad. However, my attraction point would get very dangerous. And this is something you run into in the Course of Miracles too. It talks a lot about the Holy Spirit always focusing on good and your success. And it's talking about really your inner being constantly focusing on the good because it's so much more powerful. <laughs> if it joins you in the negative attraction point of, of suckery, you would get sucking things really quick. And so it's very important that it holds a powerful, positive point of attraction. So those negative emotions are actually a sign that you are opposing your success. You are opposing your abundance. And we don't mean to do that. I mean, how a silly thing to be like, I'm opposing my own abundance when all I think about is wanting more money. You're opposing your alignment with source. You're opposing the vortex that holds. Do you see? Do you see? I see. Yes, I see. Yes, I see. Yeah, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. I mean, we all do it. What can you do? What can you do? Good thoughts from Abraham.